welcome to Cinema Therapy, the podcast for people who know nothing about life but know all about film and TV. I'm Nicole. I'm Karen. Oh my gosh, you just heard our new intro music, courtesy of Udoka. Woo-hoo! Udoka. He was our guest uh, on our a. Uh, uh, we force each other to watch uh, TV episode. It's a great episode. Yes. Memorable and he, guest. You know, he has multiple talents. So I hit him up about getting us some music, and he did. He did it. It was amazing. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, it's very reflective I get, of, like, our vibes and yeah. our energy. Groovy. Yeah. Groovy, Groovy and hype. Is that what you told him? So no, I didn't, hype. but he just, like, understands us. So that's what I'm happened. I'm into it. Welcome back. Back. Thank you. We haven't been here in like I, I feel like a month now. No, it's been uh, way too long, honestly. Because I think this show is so energizing for me. I'm really, really upset that I wasn't doing this every week. Aww. I didn't realize how much of a hole it was going to cause in my life. I thought I was going to feel more relaxed, but I feel like I felt <laughs> less relaxed. I really do love having this outlet. So, well, what's new? What have you been up to, Nicole? Uh, so I went to Chicago for the first time since leaving in October, abruptly leaving my Chicago family. Mm. And it was quite amazing. Uh, I surprised one of my best friends. She was the matron of honor at my wedding. Um, and she was turning 29, having a murder mystery party. <laughs> and I've never attempted to surprise anyone in my life before um, because I like to talk about things. <laughs> yeah. I don't like to hide things away um but it went really really well it was adorable i was hoping i would make her cry and i did (laughs) i saw that video it was was so cute sweet yes yeah it's very not like you to like not say anything or to be sneaky about something it's not gemini not at all all. no i like to share all the information yeah i'm learning all the levels of what i can be i'm very proud of myself (laughs) uh karen what have you been up to oh my goodness um, I have been enjoying a lot of things. Um, we went to the Frida Kahlo exhibit yes. at Brooklyn Museum. It was amazing. It was very amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, we watched the movie right after and like, <laughs> that's another episode. Yeah. I love Salma Hayek. I love Julie Taymor, the director, but... Um, it did not meet my expectations. <laughs> it like it has not aged well in my mind. I thought it was right. going to be amazing. I was like, oh, we're going to cap off this amazing <laughs> Frida day with the Frida movie. <laughs> and I was, whoa. I was just like deflated. I, yeah. Oh. Well, so yeah. it's kind of like a similar feeling when like I, so I was like really obsessed with this poem. Um, I thought Frida Kahlo had written it. Mm-hmm. But I found out like months later, it's a woman writing as if Frida Kahlo wrote a letter to her to get through a heartbreak. OK, it's a beautiful poem. Anyways. Um, yeah. But I was like disappointed because I'm like, oh, my God, it's like these, this is Frida. These are her words. Mm-hmm. I feel her energy. And yeah, I didn't feel the, the Frida energy from the movie. Yeah, I would agree with that. But it, Selma was amazing. She was. She's a really good actress. And I feel like if she had more to work with as far as dialogue, it would have been great. But I felt like it felt kind of hollow. It was just like the central moments that we mm-hmm. all know about. Uh, regarding Frida's life and not really anything deeper. Mm -hmm. It didn't show any kind of theme that I could connect to, I guess. Like, it was just like, these are the things that happened to her and move on. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I also went to a Fleetwood Mac concert. Good for you. Just a lot of great female energy. Yeah. And um, Stevie Nicks. I was on a dating app show. Oh, my gosh. Just your prized pig. Quiz Date Live? Is that the name? Quiz Date Live. Oh, my goodness. I'm your real life bachelorette. Yo, <laughs> this feels like the 90s. 90s came back. Yeah. And yeah, it was the, like, what was the name of that show? Wasn't the newly Singled one? out? Yeah. Well, no, there was one where it was like three people and you couldn't see them. Singled um, out was, did something like that. But yeah, I know what show you're talking about. I don't remember the name. It was like an older version of Singled yeah, Out. Yeah. My friend also brought that up when I told her the experience. But yeah, it's great. I'm putting myself out there. I'm learning to exist in relationships like a mature person 
I, I really just want to participate in your dating. You I really cannot abs- be matchmaker, Nicole. I just want to be a part of it, okay? Like, I am over here being married, and there's just, that's it. I'm married. I'm done. Like, there's no more dating, okay? You could be like, it's like a Cyrano kind of thing where you, like, speak for me. You Maybe. Like just deliver. Oh, if you had a headset I had, and I gave you, yeah. like, oh, my God, I'd be so good at that. Yeah, because I hate meeting people and being alone with people. I so. love it. I love it. Okay, real quick housekeeping before we <laughs> jump into the show. I just wanted to remind you all to please rate and review us on iTunes. I would really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Uh, we would both really appreciate it. And just, like, also tell us about your favorite episodes and topics. We really want to bring what energizes you and what excites you about our show. Uh, so it helps us know what you really like. So we really appreciate if you rate and reviewed us on iTunes and followed us on social media at Cinema Therapy Show. Um, my independent handle is Nicole Sophia, Sophia with a PH, and then KJ Pangantion. Mm-hmm. And you can figure out how to spell it. I guess Do we'll have to. I guess we'll Stalk have to. Stalk me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but good news, we're joining the Digital Stream Radio family. We also, are. Okay? Yes. Yes. You can also find us on Digital Stream Radio. Yes. We, we like to have lots of platforms where you can find us. We're going to be on Stitcher soon. Um, don't you worry, guys. You're going to have all so many options on how to <laughs> listen worry. to sentiment therapy. I know you were <laughs> wrestling in your sleep wondering <laughs> how to deal with this. Um, all right. Let's talk about our guests for today. Today, we have Brett Parker Dixon. Three men. Hi, guys. Thanks oh, my for gosh, being you have a great here. radio voice. Well, thanks. I yeah. appreciate that. Wow. Came in super clear. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Brett. Thanks for being here today. Um, I asked Brett to come in. Um, I know he's a... Uh, an actor that moved to New York fairly recently, right? Yeah, about a year and some change. So, Where are you oh. coming from? Phoenix, Arizona. Well, nice. technically Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay, the cool. The greater Phoenix area. I don't think I've ever been. Is that like where Breaking Bread is? It was New Mexico. Oh, I was, yeah, I'm I don't ignorant. think so. <laughs> I'm very ignorant. But anyways, yes, welcome. I chose, I asked Brett to be here today because uh, Brett and I work together, but Um, Brett can really talk your ear off about anything regarding film and television. And I think it's very impressive to, like, have someone that's knowledgeable. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Hopefully, uh, I won't, uh, you know, railroad you guys too much here, but, uh, (laughs) I'll do my, I'll do my best to, uh, yeah, I will, uh, do my best to not, to keep it brief, uh, where I can. Oh, I'm just going to put up my hand and be like, stop it. That's enough. No, no I'm <laughs> I appreciate that. No, no, no. no more movies on this movie and TV show podcast. <laughs> I'm done with this conversation. No, no. We're happy to have you here, Brett. Thank you cool, so cool, much. Cool. What is our episode today? So uh, we are talking about gifted kids today. Uh, I watched Umbrella Academy with my husband um, very quickly. It was a very uh, it, it kept up with our whole weekend. Um, <laughs> and what it made me think of afterwards is how the kids in the story are uh, centrally understood to be special, more special than other people in the story. Um, if you you haven't heard about this show yet. Uh, basically, there's seven siblings who are all selected um, from across the world. They're all people, kids that uh, were born unexpectedly at the on the same day. Um, and then they all were thought to have special abilities. So this rich uh, guy, what was his name, Hargreaves? Mm-hmm. Um, he collects as many of these babies that were born that day that he can and ends up being seven of them um as they grow up where we as the audience understand that there's six that are actually uh with gifted powers uh being able to influence people with their voice um being able to uh speak with the dead there's so many powers that are (laughs) represented here but one of which um, is told that she is unspecial. There are no gifts that she can offer, and she feels 
kind of like the outcast of this family. Um, and it just made me think about like all the shows and movies where that's the case and the times in our life that make us feel like we are either special or less special <laughs> than people um, around us. So, Well, let's talk about that because I feel like the term gifted is so vague mm -hmm. also. I mean, it just... It could mean so many different things. When I thought we were doing a gifted episode or a, um, an episode on gifted kids, I like my mind went to something different. And as did uh, our producer Jay's, mm -hmm. she thought that we were going with like a beautiful mind mm -hmm. and um, you know genius. Mm -hmm. Gina Davis is a genius. <laughs> did you know that? Isn't that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's just, good to know. Yeah. But yeah, so why did you just, what made you, Nicole, think of like Umbrella Academy, Gifted Kids, mm -hmm. X-Men? Um, well, I think those are fun gifts. I can't think of a movie where, I mean, A Beautiful Mind, maybe if it was from his childhood, then it could have mm. fit in, into this uh, bracket. Uh, but in this case, there, I can't think of a lot of TV shows and film where it's just about them being more intelligent mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. prodigal in some sort of gift, um, gift that isn't like a power uh, that I find particularly interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think we can relate it to, I guess, the conventional wisdom of what gifted is um, because there is still something that people are prizing for whatever reason. And then there's this distinction of like, you know, the people who don't have that special prize, like how do they feel in relation to that? So, yeah, that's where it yeah. took me. You were a gifted child, <laughs> weren't I, you? I mean, I try not to, you know, bring it up in conversation. Well, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to. How, how are you I mean, gifted? Yeah. I want to know. Well, <laughs> Karen was also gifted. So, uh, basically, we were both in the gifted program at our elementary school. Mm. Um, if you didn't know this, Brett, uh, okay. Karen and I have known each other since kindergarten, oh. but, uh, we did not become friends until high school, but I knew her, I knew her the, the, all these years. Um, and we both entered the gifted program in fourth grade, even though people were screened for the gifted program in second grade. Uh, the reason why I missed that screening, I was in a different school that time. Um, my dad <laughs> took advantage of the fact that he had owned two properties in Miami and said that we lived at the other property so that I could get back into mm. Gilbert Porter where they had the gifted program. They did not have the gifted program. Your at, dad is such a hustler. Yo, my dad, no, he like he's like, tell me up. what all the rules and regulations are so I can hop over that and figure my shit out. Like make yes. the system work for you. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Hustle, hustle real yeah. hard. So yeah, we were uh, within months of each other, we ended up in the, the gifted program. I think you went maybe before me a few months before. I'm and not sure. I went sure. like middle of fourth grade. Yeah. Or like it was the very beginning of fourth grade. And yeah. we had the same fourth grade teacher, too. Robinson. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, so me being screened into that program, I remember there were these journal entries that my uh, fourth grade teacher would – give me like a face every time like I looked at the response and I didn't know if it was like a good thing or a bad thing um but I think she saw that my writing level was high above like the other students so she recommended that I take an IQ test after the IQ test they're like lo and behold you should be gifted and then <laughs> that's mm -hmm. where that's where they put me um I don't know it felt really awkward though I didn't feel comfortable with the rest of the gifted kids mm -hmm. no they it felt like they had been in this very strong identity since they were in second grade. Yeah. They're like, these are the people who understand how my brain works, and we're very similar. We're all smart. And the kids who are in the other classes are, you know, averages. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. They're just, you know. They were definitely, like, <laughs> raised with that kind of confidence. Like, yeah. Like, at a young, early age. Yeah. It felt Ugh. like they really understood, like, I have something to bring. And, like, there was yeah. a lot of there was that confidence of, you know, I'm going to think in the way that I think and it's going to make me special. I, yeah. I uh, do find it interesting um, that a lot of times, like, it really matters how your abilities are, like, cultivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because from a young age, when you're told, like, oh, you're really special, mm -hmm. it might bring a sense of confidence to you. But there's also, like, an isolating factor yeah. to that, too. Which of I think course. that we're going to hit... Yeah. I'm sure, uh, especially talking about like 
X Men maybe versus yeah. some of the other ones where like you have these powers that are great, you have this ability, um, and what it ultimately you're told to do is to like kind of isolate yourself from everyone else mm-hmm. because you should only use it where it's necessary and not in other places. And like it's this very like being careful mm-hmm. kind of thing, as where you also look at like that's the whole part of the conceit of the X-Men is like the the so and so bad guys in it have a confidence about like we're better and that means that we should um we like we physically and mentally are better like right. we're the evolutionary right. next step right. as yeah. opposed to like oh I'm different and therefore I should only show things when it's appropriate and like yeah. that's the whole conversation that's being happening yeah. throughout the entire series um which I think is interesting like a lot of it has to do with like how it's framed when you grow up and that sort of, of course. thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely I didn't know what was happening, honestly. Like, no one told me that why I was changing classes. Mm -hmm. No one told me why I was taking these tests. No one told me why I was, like, being pulled out of class to talk to a counselor, guidance counselor. Same. Mm -hmm. No one told me what the IQ test was. Yeah. They were just like, take this, do this thing. Go into this, like, small room with this person and, like, look at these pictures and tell them what you see. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this... Hello, like, how are you not gonna? But I understand why, because, like, let's say you didn't pass the, or Mm -hmm. I mean, pass or fail, like, you didn't get the score that you needed to to enter into a gifted program. Um, And then there is this feeling of, like, oh, I thought I was smart and I'm not that smart. And then you, like, adopt this new mentality. Maybe you were a really high performing child, and that's why they thought that you would do really well on this IQ test. Um, you end up not doing as high as you thought, and then you start reassessing your identity as like, okay, like mm, now I'm not going to spend that. as much time on my homework, or I'm not going to put as much effort because I've already adopted the idea that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah. I think mm. it's just like, I, I feel like there's a sort of a fear of giving too many labels to kids like super mm-hmm. early. Um, sometimes I feel like a lot of times they're fine with giving positive labels. Um, but anything that might make a person be cr- overly critical of who they, they might be, then I think they're more cautious. So yeah. I also understand, like, I, I got you. I wish that I knew what I was doing. Cause I don't think I put <laughs> all my effort into it. Honestly, I was just kind of like, uh, okay. Like I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. It was a Saturday morning or something. It was, uh, yeah, it was a weird dude, day. Um, your guys, I don't know if this is too deep, but like, did mm-hmm. you, um, were your like parents like prideful of the fact that you guys were in it? Like, how did that affect your like? Did you feel like there's more pressure on you? Yeah, and that sort of thing. <laughs> what do you think, Karen? My parents never really like gave me any recognition for anything. Really? Yeah, like no, like they there was they never showed any kind of pride. They Not were, to my face. Really? But no, they, my dad was yeah. openly proud. Yeah. Well, that's ama- That's beautiful. And that's how we should raise our kids. But it, it, I think it put much more pressure on me mm. afterwards. Like, I am grateful to the gifted program because I do believe they invested more resources into mm-hmm. that class. Yeah. Um, and I do feel like I was getting increasingly bored with school just because it was yes. just like the same like worksheets and reading things that you know chapter by chapter that took me like a lot less time to finish I was just bored um I appreciate that but whenever I wasn't meeting my father's expectations he would go back to like remember Miss Robinson our fourth grade teacher like she believed in you she said that you oh, were gonna that's... be successful and then she passed away like remember so she's looking at you from heaven oh my <laughs> god that is traumatic that's yo, not okay yo like how are you gonna use that dead woman my father is a pisces you. man <laughs> that is dark as fuck manipulation oh my god that's, that's, that's like the you know like get yourself a super villain like backstory <laughs> kind of thing villain. that's oh what my I'm like, god. But like that's hargreaves that's what's so interesting i find about like <laughs> this particular so like how it's cultivated yeah and like the mm-hmm. moment that you find out that you have these things how do other people react to you right. and what do they tell 
tell you you have to do. Mm -hmm. And then they put these pressures on you that ultimately end up shaping what becomes the story of your life, you know? For sure. Um, Because bad guys think that they're doing the right thing Mm -hmm. because that's what they were told. And good guys the same way. Right. So it's just interesting because that's why I asked because I was interested about, like, how your parents Mm -hmm. reacted to finding out, oh, my, my child might be yeah better than other people's you know and that sort of thing because definitely i know my my mom um brags and like i feel like i am in competition with all the people that i went to theater Mm. like through theater with yeah like i'm in competition with people's children Mm -hmm. still yeah. yeah like i get a phone call from my mom and she'll be like yeah well so and so booked this thing and you're like that's great yeah. That is awesome to hear. Um, but I, I'm i working hard, too. Right. Um, and I feel like it's interesting to to see that ultimately what ends up shaping you is, is how other people react to finding out that you're gifted in different ways. Mm-hmm. I was never gifted in an intellectual <laughs> sense, but uh, I, I was gifted with some talents, yeah. hope, I hope. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I like to think is that everyone yeah. is exactly. special yeah. or gifted in yeah. some way. Mm-hmm. I think of I don't know if you've ever seen this image where it's mm-hmm. like a whole bunch of different animals and then they're like, Okay, climb a tree and there's like a monkey, an elephant, a rhinoceros or mm-hmm. whatever and it's like, Okay, obviously the monkey can climb the tree, everybody else can't and it's like if you test somebody on one specific set of skills, then everyone's mm-hmm. going to think that they're dumb. And that's really what it I <laughs> I think it's so important to keep in mind is like everyone has certain gifts and like if everyone was really amazing at math and science, Mm -hmm. like there would be a lack of employment and so many other things that we need Mm -hmm. to make the society going. Um, And I I think one of the things that make life beautiful is producing art. And I think there is so much gifts and uh, intelligence to, that comes from like being able to express yourself in music and art mm-hmm. and, and acting and whatnot. Um, so we, we need to not just only focus in on whatever is like economically <laughs> profitable. Like, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's mm-hmm. talk about Umbrella Academy. Okay. Did y'all like it? I did. I didn't like it. I know you didn't. (laughs) Didn't. Spoiler. Um, Brett, tell us. I I mean, I had some thoughts about this. Yeah. Uh, You know, I'll be honest. I watched half of the season. Okay. Uh, So I didn't get through it. No. And and here's the thing. It's not so much that I disliked it. I found it somewhat difficult to follow. Interesting. Um. As far as like, and like maybe it's just like how my mind works. So mm-hmm. maybe I wasn't super interested in it or something. Mm-hmm. But like, I was like, wait, why are, what are they doing? Like, usually mm-hmm. I have a pretty easy time following the story. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I, like I, I understood the relationships, but I felt like there were so many characters and so much happening, which is like the start of any show. There's a mm-hmm. lot of things. But I was like, I am, like, somewhat confused about yeah. what's going on in this show. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, ultimately, I, I thought the performances were good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, that's absolutely. the thing. Like, I can be objective. The performances were cool. Mm-hmm. Even the special effects are pretty cool. They're really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I was a little bit lost. So, hopefully, maybe Karen will walk me through some no, of the things I mean, that I didn't understand. Well, here's the thing. Like, I loved it. <laughs> I also did not read the comics, though. The comic was... Mm-hmm. Um, Written a little back, you know, backstory is uh, was written by Gerard Way, lead singer of My Chemical Romance, um, with a comic <laughs> drawn by Gabriel Ba. I I watch a lot of um, movies or TV shows regarding or like that are based off of comic books. I did not grow up reading comic books, so mm-hmm. I approach these things with a different perspective. But I know a lot of people um, like have their opinions on these kinds of movies and TV shows because of their, like, love uh, or affinity for Mm -hmm. comic books and graphic novels. Um, I I can't explain why I liked it. The performances really moved me. Um, Graphics, yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't, I I can't, like, I'm not a movie critic, so I can't really, like, say in, like, this 
intelligent way why I'm drawn That's to something. That's fine. You liked it. I know. That's... I'm getting very defensive. I know. No, I know. Because like, I'm I don't laser <laughs> like looking at Karen right now. My <laughs> eyes are just like... <laughs> I didn't even I didn't realize that was happening. Burning yeah. holes like, into her cheeks, no. and she's getting so uncomfortable. You know, like that's fine. I didn't you can feel have your opinion right now. I just I realized, look, I'm what I will say on uh, slightly tangential to what you were saying earlier. I get people being um, having like strong opinions because something was a comic first, yeah. and like having that. But I also like feel that like film and TV is a different forum, mm-hmm. and like. I I think that relying too heavily on something that's already there mm-hmm. does tend to like I love the original Spider Man series. Mm-hmm. I love the Michael Keaton Batmans. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason I like them is because like they were influenced by the comics, yeah. but they didn't try and be the comics. Right, right. Yeah. And then Absolutely. the more that you gravitate towards that, I feel like to some extent it gets too convoluted because Mm -hmm. graphic novels and the way that comic books are is not the same way that like films and and television work so i prefer personally when they take a comics ideas Mm -hmm. and turn it into a movie as opposed to like trying to do the comic Mm -hmm. because i don't know to me it just it feels like you have your own personal um you know, interpretation, and you want to take the character somewhere it's not been before. And I appreciate that personally. Yeah, and understanding what works in film and TV, right? Because mm-hmm. I think comics, a lot of times, it gets into a kind of campy, comical place. Um, and sometimes they bring in plots that I don't think necessarily translate well to you know visual yeah. like live action movies um i think stylistically the show is very very strong mm-hmm. um if you're looking to escape into a world that feels kind of dark feels kind of quirky um i would recommend that it, i i think the problem is for me <laughs> is the dialogue it's very very weak honestly mm-hmm. i i'm who plays number five um and number uh number five and i think klaus um those characters i the the actors like they did so much with having very very limited um like the the other characters were grasping at straws it really sucked (laughs) on uh, like even vanya you think oh girl (laughs) ellen Ellen page is just being ellen page until like the end when her eyes are glowing like i just uh, I guess, like, I, I didn't understand, like, why the decisions, the why the characters were making certain decisions. They would just, like, make these broad statements about, like, where they are. And it just felt like it was, like, a screenplay in draft. Like, okay, mm. I know um, that this character is feeling lonely. So she says, I'm lonely. And it's just, like, can we find another way to show right. that? Show, don't tell. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. the, the words that they were using didn't... I, I felt like it didn't have any personal connection to each character's plight because they s- all talked very similarly and they would just, they weren't good at like showing me why they made crazy decisions. Like there's some <laughs> like there are yeah. Libras. Well, it's <laughs> just so you know, they're all Libras. We're yeah. October 1st. Oh. That's true. <laughs> so no leaders. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> People who are just going to debate and no leaders. That makes sense. <laughs> Anyways. Yes, I will agree with you that the writing could have been better. And, you know, as actors, they were grasping for straws. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, to some extent, if the writing's bad, there's only so much you can do. Right. If you watch even... Looking, I love the X Men franchise, but you look at like X Men Apocalypse and that ugh, ugh. script. I you watch James McAvoy oh my just God. try yeah. throughout the whole <laughs> last <laughs> half right. of that movie, and like I remember a specific moment where he said something, and I was like, I don't think I'd be able to make it through a take without laughing if that was the dialogue <laughs> that was put in front of me, and he says it as sincerely as possible oh, he's like tearing up and i was like man you are ewan mcgregoring right now oh, like no. you're pulling yourself like this script is rough and you are doing your best 
And like, I think that there's something to be said of like, if the script is bad, there's only so much the actors yeah. can do. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And I don't know how bad I felt like the script was. I will say there was a lot of the the, the like telling instead of showing right. thing, which like, yeah, it's faster, mm -hmm. but it also means you have less of a personal connection to what's going on. Exactly. I feel and like And you're making the audience feel like like you're treating them like they're dumb. Yes. Which I have a problem with. Same. It's not a serial crime thing mm -hmm. which like that's all they do they're like and the victim this happened and this that and the other and this is what we've decided and you're like you guys have been doing this for f what 10 15 years right i'm pretty sure you don't have to talk all this out loud right that's yeah <laughs> that's fair <laughs> but it's yeah sorry i don't i don't want to make i don't want to Make Still it sound like, it. like it's bad. <laughs> the thing is, like, I don't feel like it was that bad. But I will say there was a little bit of that. And I think that to some extent that's why it got a little confusing. There was just, like, too much words. Yeah. That, that it gets better towards the end. The I'll last, have to watch the end of the it. The last half of it is a lot – it moves a lot faster. A lot more happens. I will say right. that much. I it's a plot it's heavy. Right. That's fine. I'm really I felt the you. same way – look, I – recently started watching Star Trek Discovery oh, and the first saying? four episodes are hard to get through but after that it's good mm -hmm. I enjoyed it I will say a lot of shows struggle with that mm -hmm. sort of prologue portion of it right. and so like if you can get through it maybe that's what I need to do we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that I'll talk to you about it at some point yes, I will do. watch the end of it looking forward to it I mean if they took the time to actually <laughs> care about like showing these characters and making them like feel separate like I, I just feel like they wasted time doing this little dance sequence with the Tiffany thing I was like what's the point of this well, like they're both dancers they're musical theater actors they wanted to utilize their talents I'm just uh, kidding I'm just talking crap uh, <laughs> I mean anyways, is it a mu are we singing like, no Nicole we're not okay so <laughs> <laughs> but like my chemical romance. Okay, you know what? Let's talk about <laughs> why these yeah. to piggyback off of that point that you were making that they Great. are not leaders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Let's do that. But let's talk about it because I feel like okay, it's trauma. These individuals have been bred, like pretty much bred. You know what I mean? Mm. Like raised to like be these machines to protect the world like how traumatic is that like mm -hmm. i feel like number four's reaction to his life to who his identity and the world um it's uh his name is seance klaus um he's a spiritualist and he has the gift of communicating with the dead and um joining the physical world with the uh spiritual world that can drive a person crazy. How would you not be like a drug addict? Like after mm. all of that, like, he has a really true. shitty power to begin that with. That is not a shitty power. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. It gets better at the end. I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it at the end. Um, but I say the only power that's worse that I've seen is if anyone has seen Misfits. It's that girl who, when people touch her, then they feel like they need to have sex with her. That's the worst power oh. I've ever seen. Yes, yes. And it was a light-skinned black girl, so I was very upset about yeah. that. It's like, give her that better power. That was literally her power? Yes, like, like when people would would touch her, they were like... Um, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that is... <laughs> it is every girl's power! And she didn't need it, because she was, like, really hot, and she was killing it. Like, everybody was really into her, so, like, she was, like... Active. Right, like yeah. what if they gave that? Like, what if it was like someone who didn't look like that? It was like you a slut I mean? shame power. Honestly, it was oh. like the universe was correcting her like high level of acti Yikes. activity. It was really upsetting. Honestly, Yikes. I'm okay. So go going back, I feel like he does have a shitty power, uh, <laughs> and it's rough. And I understand why he needs to use drugs to kind of dampen. Mm -hmm. um, the feeling of like feeling very connected to the dead mm -hmm. and his. Um, one of his siblings who has since passed away. Um, we haven't been revealed what happened, but um, yeah, I I get I get his plight. I think he's probably the one of the more interesting characters mm -hmm. on the show. Um, and I feel like okay, Mr. Hargreaves. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the first name of their father, um, but I agree with you that they. <laughs> 
endured a lot of trauma throughout their lives. Um, he was completely lacking in any sort of emotional intelligence. Uh, he had no business raising children. It's kind of, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't seen the um, Leaving Neverland documentary, mm. but it kind of makes me think of that, of like some people who aren't given the opportunity to like live their own childhood and just mm. feel like, you know, they're, they have only one purpose in this world and like undergo all this abuse. Um, it's it's really hard to raise mm. a functioning adult being in an environment like that. So I get why yeah. that they would it, this would happen. I guess like I wish that they embraced the fact that everyone was so like the, everyone was dealing with this uh, emotional burden because I feel like they yeah. just like kind of skirt over it. Like I feel like that, yeah. like I know that like, mm-hmm. especially on second viewing, I'm like, okay, I can understand a show where they really were embracing the fact that these are troubled adults. Like these were kids that thought that they were really special and amazing and heroes. And now they're uncomfortable with this ide- identity as adults and are unsure about how to navigate and like there was like some mental health theme aspect that was also being explored but i feel like they don't get that deep exactly yeah i totally am with you on that yeah i mean i think that to some extent there's a lot of characters that's part of it too is like a lot of shows unless you're doing like lost Mm -hmm. where every episode is about one character Mm -hmm. and like then you can maybe make that happen but also like if you're doing a show that part of the fun of it is that it's like kind of superhero-y yeah you want all of those characters to exist Mm -hmm. and there's no like re there's like kind of central main characters but like not really so that's part of the hard part too it's not like Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, well, Luke Cage is clearly the person I'm supposed to be rooting for. Right, or right. Wolverine. Or Wolverine. Yeah. Or even in the X-Men franchise, there are more strong characters mm-hmm. like Logan and Professor X. And like the people who get more time spent on them, mm-hmm. um, you don't actually see as much of the subplots with some of the other characters. You, like, you get a little bit of the Iceman. You get a little bit yeah. of, like, that kind of stuff. But they focus primarily on themes, mm-hmm. which I think is the other thing, too, that I love about the X-Men franchise as a whole, is mm-hmm. that it's talk. It's it's putting forth a message. It's not um, celebrities, like... That's my issue kind of with where Marvel went as far as that went, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's about the character. And you're like, no, it should be about saying something. Yeah, Which the X-Men franchise does, which is exactly what we're talking about. This sort of, like, how you're raised, what it means to be different. They talk a lot about, I mean, the themes um, kind of pull into sort of this sort of racism and, Mm -hmm. like... You know, what was sort of like that World War Two Nazism kind yeah. of thing. Lots of pulls in that direction. It says a lot of things. Um, and I think that that is what I kind of wish there was more of. Yeah. Maybe in Umbrella Academy. What I was it, yeah. it was hoping for was a little bit more of, of let's talk about a message. Let's talk about a subject and yeah. use the characters to push that forward. All right. That's that makes sense. A fair point. I'm not trying to. Again, I would like to point out that it's not a terrible show. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anyone to listen to this and be like, "Well, that guy just hates it." Yeah. Like, no, I can see like the good parts of it too. I also need to finish it. I want to put that out there. But that's the difference with yeah. like X Men and Umbrella Academy is mm-hmm. like the. Umbrella Academy were celebrities from the get go. Like yeah. they were glorified. Right. Like these were people that, uh, these were people that uh, like society loved and looked to. Right. And, uh, and weren't like, afraid of. Right. Where the X Men are mutants mm-hmm. and you know shunned and shamed or, you know, very isolated. Yeah. Well, it's again, it's how you know society reacts to it. Right. I guess, to some extent. Yeah. Um, which is like the whole Marvel thing too. The, the, those heroes were accepted ultimately, eventually. Like, mm-hmm. and they're starting to backpedal on that a little bit yeah. about like what, to what degree, humanity is willing to accept your powers, and like, does that give you the right to make decisions for everyone mm-hmm. because you are stronger and that sort of thing, which is an interesting topic to wrestle with. And I hope that they actually go that direction instead yeah. of. 
you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Well, which is my I issue feel with like Marvel. part of them <laughs> like do that with like Magneto. Oh, like, oh well, the X Men yeah. does a lot more yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. I'm talking about Marvel. Marvel in sorry, general. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. That's the one I'm talking about. Um, versus yes, the X Men franchise, which I think doesn't. That's what I like about it. Yeah. I will say. There are some interesting writing moments in the X Men franchise. Oh, for as well. sure, especially in the beginning. X three is a trip. Yeah, and X one is is campy. Yes. Um. I mean, the what power. happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Yo. The same thing that happens to everything else. Right. And you're like, okay. All right, that's that's a line. Well, they were embracing the comic yes, aspect. Yes, it felt yeah, like sure. a comic line. Yes. And I was like, which is fine. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I will also agree that it's not the most terribly well-written yeah. movie in the world. Well, Agreed. they're all so different from each other. Because yeah. it's like 11 movies over the span of like almost 20 years now. Yeah. Like so many different directors, producers, like... They have different actors playing different characters mm-hmm. now. Or like the same character now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's become a mess, honestly. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sad about it. We'll see where the next movie goes. I, the last trailer I saw for Dark Phoenix was actually really exciting, and it made made my hope go up a little bit. But the last movie was a waste of my time, to be honest. Like, oh, Apocalypse? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. It should have just ended with Logan. Logan, yeah, Logan was, was literally one of the most perfect superhero well, i hesitate to call it a superhero movie it's, it's like so much western. greater than that no honestly. country for old it's men a western. well it's the same director yeah. who did 310 to yuma yeah james mangle yeah yeah so and it's a, just a good film yeah um and like kind of a superhero movie um but i will say that i felt like they should have ended there especially because of Apocalypse was not great, and so continuing that line seems kind of weird. And especially now that they've been bought out by Disney. So. Well, that's the thing. Like this merger so. is gonna like change things completely. Yeah. So they're gonna make this movie, and that's gonna be the note that it ends on, and it's gonna be awkward. That's my. Feeling. Can we get a new mystique? Can we just like yeah, I would no more like Dark Phoenix be the end because they already made it fine, and then let's do a new mistake. Let's we, yeah bring back um, new star. Rebecca Romaine. Yes, yes. I she, love her. Uh, yes. She was incredible. Brett, like broke neck. He said yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she is. Um, she still looks so great. great. Yeah, I'm sure. And also like I just. I I have feelings about Jennifer Lawrence, but I also feel like I I don't dislike her just so that we're clear. I just, (laughs) I'm just very curious to see love how she plays mystique. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) just because like I, there's not enough like that femme fatale thing. And like, she has a power over everyone. Mm -hmm. She uses Mm -hmm. her power to manipulate people. She, that's like part of her thing and she uses sex to manipulate people and she uses all these things to manipulate people and i just feel like when i watch jennifer lawrence do it i'm a little bit like and she is a quintessential normal girl next door yeah yeah girl next door and it makes sense because you know the first time we see this character she is somebody who's in um professor x as a child's home Mm -hmm. and he welcomes the home to her and like is feeding her it's like okay so we there's the sympathetic Mm -hmm. like relationship between the two and we're trying to understand her as Mm -hmm. like more than the sensual femme fatale it would have been really interesting if we could see how she got from there to this like really sensuous yeah. woman who's able to use her like manipulation powers against mm-hmm. so many different people like ugh. well and it's it's also like hard because now we're potentially in a different universe yeah. than the one that was built through the last one cuz we went back in time and we changed everything so this mystique isn't even the same mystique that was in the original thing so it's kind of like it's hard to put that label because again that is my predisposition towards what mystique should be mm-hmm. everyone is allowed to have their own interpretation oh they are but but can, i don't think Lawrence it's just boring? interesting like yeah, that's great. what it is well, like you don't be boring i just that you would like on that on that role i'd have to think about it though we kravitz wait 
Oh, mm-hmm. she was played Angel in the first one. Mm. <laughs> she, well, in the like the first. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. She played Angel, mm. and that was really interesting. Actually, I liked her little. Uh, I think it was one of her first yeah. acting roles. Actually. We should do that. We should just like recast this whole thing right now. I'm just kidding. I mean, I Look, if you want to get into it, but, uh. <laughs> it sh- I feel like it should be a dancer. Like Rebecca Romaine, I think was like an extremely fit person. So it was someone who was, you, you know, also they didn't give her m- much to do, which mm-hmm. is interesting too, because she was a very few words. And yes. that is also what made her very impactful. Exactly. Yeah. She didn't have to say that much. Right. Right. For you to understand what Mystique was. Right. As where they centralized Mystique as a character, and so now she just talks all the time. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. You know, like, I'm a storm. Can, can you're like, have also, storm? look. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm, not I'm interested anything. to see how that goes. Well, what's wrong with Storm? Oh, the new one? Or the both Who of them. The Honestly, they were both boring. They're fun mm-hmm. in the comics. Like Storm yeah, is one of my great characters. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I, I love Storm. She's definitely my favorite superhero. So I'm just like the one who has like one of the most powerful mm. powers, like can you give her something to do rather than just like guide the ship? That's all she's doing. She have her backstory. They kind of touched on it in Apocalypse, mm-hmm. where she's in. I think she's in Africa. I don't remember mm-hmm. what country, um, but that's um, true to the comics. She's supposed to be African, yeah. and I think Halle Berry didn't touch on that at all in the the first three movies. I and I don't remember. I haven't watched it in a while. I feel like she occasionally tried to do an accent. Oh, really? Okay. No, I think you're right. Like just like that. a hint of something. <laughs> I, it completely <laughs> passed me. And I could be wrong. But but I feel like that might have been the case. Um, but, like, the thing is, she, again, she wasn't a central character to the story that yeah. they were telling. So they just were like, oh, and also she's here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, <man>, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the The new one, I mean, and she's in the trailer. So uh, potentially she'll play a bigger oh, role. Right. It's hard to tell. Um, I don't want to critique a movie i haven't seen yet so yeah Yeah. i'd like to see it i'd like to be optimistic and hope for the best yeah you know we can do i've like you brett i have been very attracted to these themes for a long time Mm -hmm. like um since i was a kid i would look at my cousin's comic books and x-men was always the one that i would look to Mm -hmm. and when it was on tv that's what i was looking to um there's just something really endearing about the idea of like being that those outcasts and feeling like it could be anyone like anyone could end up with these with these powers and i, I guess like that mm, i was excited mm-hmm. by the idea like it could be me like any anything oh, <laughs> yeah up right but now. but also like feeling like you know like i guess like it wasn't s- the, there, there's also that conflict of like feeling like you can't be who you were before and yeah sorry Brett yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. I was just thinking um, it actually made me think I don't this is an interesting comparison but like it's it, what I like about the X-Men franchise is to some extent similar to how I felt about Black Panther mm-hmm. you can see the other side's perspective mm-hmm. it's not so much that like the way that they're going about it is always like the greatest way of doing it Mm -hmm. obviously Mm -hmm. x-men magneto gets a little bit like this is what the world did to me now i'm gonna do it to you kind of thing um but there's this sense of like when you see someone and how they've been treated Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. having that thing magneto is is friends with professor x like that's the whole thing their whole their whole like dichotomy is like they respect each other yeah and that is why they can't ever really bring themselves to kind of like finish the job. Exactly. You know yeah. What I, mean? yeah. I love it. Um, and I feel like that is the same thing. Like with Black Panther, was that same thing where you're like, mm, yeah. I understand. Yeah. What is being said. Right. And I can disagree with the way that someone's going about it, yeah. but it's an interesting. Well, isn't that what happens in uh, fan- the newest Fantastic Beasts? 
as well, like with Dumbledore. Like, wasn't he lovers with um, mm-hmm. with um, what's his name? Name's Grindelwald. Name's Grindelwald. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and like they just like went down different paths, right? Yeah, but so they still like, have that admiration of each other. Yeah. Like I can understand your like the themes of oppression and feeling yeah. like, you know, we shouldn't have to be hidden with this like Muggle class who doesn't have the gifts that we have. Uh, but they're going about it in different ways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is very similar to to X Men. Wasn't there agreement like the agreement like I cannot kill you, like I will not never. Kill yeah, they you. did well, like some they like had a blood. Yeah. Packed or whatever that thing was. Yeah. And that. they're not allowed to yeah, hurt each other or something like right. that. Right. <laughs> Is that discussed in the books or was that just discussed in Fantastic Beasts recently? I think it was just in Fantastic Beasts. Okay. I There's... don't know. <laughs> I don't know either, but I, I loved it. Uh, yeah. I mean, you love Fantastic Beasts? No, I don't love Fantastic Beasts. Okay, Beast, I just want to be clear. <laughs> I, love I love like the re- like showing a light on like friendships or people that care about each other. Um, that just go down different paths in life mm-hmm. uh, because of, like, mm-hmm. society. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. much, uh, like, wicked. Like, Glinda and Alphabet, same thing. Yeah. You know I mean? That's yeah. an indie, like, uh, a theme that I, I can well, get behind. Yeah. I think part of it is, like, uh, to, to some extent, any any film is only as good as, like, the the, cons- the, the two characters' conflict, you know? Yeah. And so... If you really care about both sides, generally speaking, you'll care about the movie. Like, mm-hmm. if you care about mm-hmm. how, like, the conflict that these two characters have, and you want them to resolve it, yeah, um, you want to see, mm-hmm. you want to see these characters be friends, right? You know, that's the whole th- thing that I feel, especially with X Men, where you're like, I would, you, the moments, the few moments in which Magneto and Charles have those moments yeah. are some of the best parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, yes, this is what I wanted. Even if they're on different sides of the fence, there yeah. are moments where they're like, I respect the hell out of you. I yeah. love when they would play chess. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That I think that was a good use of showing, mm-hmm. you know, their different skill sets and how they still like appreciated spending time with each other. So yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I kind of wanted to, to maybe take it back to Harry Potter since we oh, brought yeah, it. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Since we brought it up. Um, that That's an interest. That's a whole other interesting thing um, because the wizarding world has decided to completely isolate itself. It almost acts as if the other world doesn't exist, which mm-hmm. to some extent is almost more pretentious <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, there's a level of, That's like, very true. I don't even care that you exist. Basically, you have nothing to do with my life. Yeah, That's you how know? they feel, though. Yeah. Like, it's definitely how, uh, what house is that Slytherin feels. Mm-hmm. For sure. No, I think most of them really felt like that because of, uh, Ron Weasley's father was the only one who took an interest in like the things that muggles would use to go, go through their life. He's like, oh, you have a dentist. Oh, yeah. how does a car work? Like just very interested in yeah. all these little things. And I, I, I feel like that's a natural expectation. Like if you're so close to this other world, um, even if you might not use the same tools that they would mm-hmm. use, you would think that there would be like classes that would just like look into the history of muggles, just be like, like, I, I'd, yeah. like, I'd like to know. <laughs> if magic ever goes away, they're going to be in trouble. <laughs> can't, <laughs> just... can't brush your own teeth. <laughs> Yo, that would be a shame. But man, I, I wanted I wanted that Hogwarts letter so badly. <laughs> I really mm. wanted it. And man, like nothing, that first book, it really, it, it was enchanting. Because yeah. like the idea of having this kid who was so mistreated and... I don't know about you guys, but, like, when you're a kid and, like, your teacher gets you in trouble when it was, like, not your fault or you feel like you're, like, the adults are just not listening, you feel like there's just no recourse. Nobody's really caring about the civil rights of a a child that lives in a house, right? Like, they're thinking that they're fine. Um, But in this case, like, he's living in a cupboard. Nobody else knows Mm -hmm. um, what his home situation is like. Uh, But he's getting these letters, like, perpetually, even when they're trying to keep him away from knowing his fate. He's like, 
the owl was like coming like you could not <laughs> keep Harry from knowing what was going to happen next and I just thought that was so amazing it felt mm-hmm. it was so empowering as a child to feel like okay you're going to get your justice even if it feels like you have no power in this situation there's somebody out there who's going to know that you're special and come mm-hmm. out and save you like it was very exciting in that I way I love that you got all of that from watching <laughs> Harry Potter as a child no reading the reading. first book reading. yeah well, I'm sorry she is I love she that. is a gifted person. <laughs> well, <laughs> she read. I she read, read it too. Oh I was a gifted too. <laughs> and I did read it. I'm a slow reader, but I did read them. You did read it. My mom read them to me. Aww. That's I love a true that. story. That's the sweet. first five. I'm going to read it to my yeah, kids for sure. You know what I appreciate about that? series is that um you know whatever people feel about jk rowling as a writer Mm. she did actually like grow up her books with the people who are reading them which i feel like is an interesting like cool experience yeah yeah the books got bigger they got more complicated right the themes got darker Yeah. yeah yeah you know by the end of the you know books they're just like killing people and yeah right the first one no one really like it's a troll. Yeah. yeah, it's a troll in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the stakes are not crazy yeah. high. Like, you understand, and like, characters was... are just getting killed off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Um, which, I, you know, I always appreciated that part of it. Yeah, it was um, a really special experience. I feel like the Harry Potter yeah. generation, yeah. like, nobody can take those experiences away from them. They yeah. they care more than mm-hmm. anything about these these stories and so protective like coming yeah. for jk rowling these days like excuse me you didn't say anything about <laughs> yeah. grindelwald and dumbledore <laughs> in the seventh book what happened yeah. <laughs> yeah. like we would have liked to know like <laughs> he was like well that was in draft seven like <laughs> <laughs> well which house would you be in ravenclaw uh- Oh, excuse me. Yes. What about you, Brett? Uh, well, I haven't I haven't taken the Pottermore quiz in a while okay. because I have a feeling. My friend told me she thinks it changed. I was a Slytherin when I took yeah. it. Ooh. I have been told that people don't think that that is the case anymore. But maybe you're hiding your Slytherin qualities. Maybe, or I feel like <laughs> Slytherins don't hide their qualities. <laughs> no, they're cunning. They know how to <laughs> sneak, sneak well, around. Um, I've been told that that I'm more of a Hufflepuff, but Hufflepuffs you are J.K. What? Rowling's favorite house. Well, Be- they're I particularly good finders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Puff. Yes. <laughs> that was adorable. Yeah. We're particularly uh, good yeah. finders. <laughs> yeah. Jade, what about you? Jade is our producer. Oh. Ooh. Okay. It's all right. I'm going to give Jade a Ravenclaw as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're dubbing her? I am. Like the queen. She's like, you are now part of Ravenclaw. <laughs> You're the hat. You're the starting hat. <laughs> I am Slytherin. Uh, oh, I've taken the test such, many times, yeah. and it's either Gryffindor or Slytherin. It's definitely not Gryffindor. So I'm shocked by the Slytherin. Why? What do you honest. think I am? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I am, and I'm starting to feel like I want like some like middle houses. You want one of those these. American <laughs> houses or yeah. whatever they are. <laughs> You see, Gifted did the same thing to me in elementary school. They were like, you know what? There's something different about her. We're going to like tell her that she, we're going to give her this test, but we're not going to tell her what's happening. So she fails the test the first time, oh. but there's still something different about her. So we're going to give it to her again. And then that's how I got into Gifted. I mean, I good for you for not meeting whatever the score was, but they're like, there is something there. I see it. They were like, I think they made her take the test twice. No, it was my teachers. Both Mr. Kearney, third grade, and Ms. Robinson recommended me. Shout out. I was like, 
breezing through the class. Like it was mm. boring. You know mm. what I mean? Like getting through everything really fast. Oh, I so. love a boring class. <laughs> Maybe that's the difference. <laughs> Gemini's hate being bored. That's me. Like <laughs> I hate, hate being bored. Mr. Kearney did not find anything special about me. Like talk about having uh, certain people think you have gifts and other people. Mr. Kearney thought I was going to get kidnapped and that was going to be what would be <laughs> notable about me. He legit said during class, he's like, Nicole, you are most likely to get kidnapped. You're too friendly with adults that's what he well, said well you know what I respect him for saying that but like don't say it like that like, yeah you're gonna get kidnapped right like, and I'm already anxious and thinking that like whoa. I should have like like somebody's coming through my window like a la some eccentric Janae. billionaire is gonna come in <laughs> I would have like been down for the mansion and shit <laughs> without like, like any knowing. treatment <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have thought that it would have been okay and then realized it was a mistake because um, the kids in that house are, are really fucked up. Yeah. I would have yeah. had no friends. You in that want house. the Annie treatment. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You got adopted by a billionaire who just buys you stuff. Yeah, I did. You want get to, be to dance Annie. around. Yeah. Nothing yeah. Is truly dressed Whether it's without a be a smile. great Annie. Victor Garner <laughs> or uh, the curly Annie. hair. Yeah. Got the smile. Uh. <laughs> So, yeah, gifted kids. Yeah. <laughs> gifted kids. That's what we All did right. today. <laughs> We're that gifted. Is Everyone is special. Everyone's special, guys. Please be careful about how you talk to your kids and don't give them inflated senses of confidence because, you know, sometimes they're going to fail in front of some people and they're going to succeed in, in front of other people. But for them to adopt an identity that is less than um, glowing and feeling like they're not um, bringing something to the world is, you know, potentially harmful, as this show mm -hmm. later taught us. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, spoil yeah. it, but um, y'all need to make sure that you communicate, you know, difficult messages also, to your kids in a good way. No, just to qualify, parenting is hard. It is hard. Um, and people make mistakes. Yes. And you don't know them until... Way later when mm -hmm. they become issues. But yeah. the I, I just like, you know, I love my mom. Yeah. So I don't want to like, <laughs> you know what her. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is like a sense of like, there are things that affect your kids. And mm -hmm. you, it's nice when, you know, you should talk to them about it. And that yeah. sort of thing. But um, at the same time, I do agree. You know, don't, don't do terrible things to your children and right. don't put expectations on them that they're going to later like have really bad have to go to therapy for so exactly try your best try your best that would be a good place i think parents should try their best yes <laughs> i think that's a good place to go because honestly like you said yeah. parenting is hard and a lot of times you learn how to parent from your own parents and you that's repeat true. cycles it's mm. just it's it's hard uh but do your best um i'm proud of everyone today Aww. thank you all for you. being here so and much. waiting for me because mm -hmm. I was late. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I'm worth waiting <laughs> for. Um, thank you all for tuning in to Cinema Therapy. Thank Wait. you to Jade thank you. Rick, who's thank back from South by Southwest. So jelly. Woo! First South by Southwest. Oh. And she's going to be back because she's going to make her mark there. Lots of music festivals. Yeah, she has her uh, hand in a lot of different projects. So Thank you to Brett Parker Dixon. Ooh. Ooh. Where can people find you? What are you up to? Uh, you, um, good question. Um, my Instagram is yeah. great. Is uh, at Brett Parker Dixon. Two T's. Extra T's for extra talent. Ooh. Whoa. I stole that, that from Psych. Every, so every audition. <laughs> I love it. That's cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you can find me there. Um, I think my Facebook is private. so And we respect that. So there's that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Instagram but yeah, use Instagram. Price. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, DM me. I'll talk to you. Oh, maybe. Oh, I don't mean it in that, that way. <laughs> but also, like, whatever. If you want to go. We'll put an attractive Especially picture. Like <laughs> Only put a, right. So I'm going to be on the dating show next. Is that? Yeah. We're going to do our own dating show on cinema <laughs> therapy. All of our single guests can be up for dating if you all want to DM <laughs> cinema therapy show. So there is a border. <laughs> into that DM. Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> 
Oh, all right. It's going to be cute. All right. Thank you all. Please follow us on social media and please rate and review us on iTunes. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.